Hey, hi, howdy, and hello, friends. Wickedy here, back at it with another deep dive Stardew Valley 1.5 update guide. Today, I'll be going over the perfection rating. I'll show you everything you need to grow, catch, craft, sell, fight, and befriend that was added in this update to get you to that 100% game completion. We'll take a look at everything that 100% completion gets you, including this new unlocked area. And I'll be thoroughly covering over how to learn all the new craftables and how to make them too. All right, chickadees, be sure to subscribe, drop a like, and click that bell to get notified of the next video. So here I have my very first farm that I started way back in the day, which is my completionist farm. I had everything 100% before the 1.4 update. So with this new perfection rating added, I am after getting that done and unlocking the end game content from that. So let's walk through everything we need to do to get it done for you. First up, in order to gain access to the perfection rating, you will need to have collected at least 100 golden walnuts in order to access Mr. Key's walnut room. And well, wouldn't you know, I already made a guide about how to get all of these. Be sure to check the description out for that. You will need to collect all 130 of these for a full perfection. In this room, you'll find this lucky cat computer with all of your stats that you need to fill out to hit 100% perfection. I believe I was at about 75% without any of the new island stuff. Now trying to figure out how to get everything was not easy. The wiki wizards are still doing their thing and getting the pages updated as fast as they can. Some of the information is a little off in spots and pages don't exist, but with experimentation, I figured out the rest to share with all of you. But I was completely unable to do any of this without them. First things first, let's get things shipped. There are 10 new items that you need to collect and sell. Some are much harder to find than others. The banana and mango are both fruit trees that you can get the sapling from here on Ginger Island. I bought mine from the bird trader. They take 28 days to fruit and they will always grow in the island farm. Otherwise, it will only fruit in the summer on your own home farm. Taro root and pineapple are both the new crops. You can also buy these over at the island trader. And there are a couple other ways to find these seeds and saplings, like inside of golden coconuts, by fighting enemies in volcano dungeon or inside of chests, or as a reward for our Professor Snail's quest. We need to ship a magma cap. It is an item found inside of the volcano mine, as well as the cinder shard, which is found here too. Bone fragments can be found from monsters and inside of these bone nodes. An ostrich egg took me a bit to figure out at first. It can be a drop from one of the chests inside of the volcano, which is how I got mine first. Or if you get the sailor's journal number 10, you can dig up a treasure right here and you'll get one. And lastly, the new radioactive ore and bar come from dangerous levels in the mines and skull cavern. You can get the dangerous levels after you get the quest Danger in the Deep or Skull Cavern Invasion. Both of these are quests given to you in the Walnut Room for Mr. Key. There are a ton of new variants and some of the creepy enemies you can fight this way, as well as the radioactive ore nodes there. After you finish Danger in the Deep, there will be the Shrine of Challenge in the 120th floor of the regular mines, which you can toggle the dangerous levels on and off after that point. It takes five ore to make one bar, and it takes a little over nine hours to process this. All right, moving on, we do have to build a new farm building, or rather the new island obelisk. You'll be able to build this on the farm. Um, you'll need 10 iridium bars, 10 dragon tooth, 10 bananas, and the low, low price of $1 million. And if you haven't gotten the gold clock on your farm yet, you'll need it now. Now this part is pretty fun. There is a new monster eradication goal that we have to complete. If you haven't finished all of the other monster eradication goals, be sure to check out my video guide on those. I have linked that down below as well. We have to take on some magma sprites. The sparks work for this as well. And when you complete it, you actually get Marlin's phone number as the reward too. Sup? Oh, 
uh, oh, okay, bye. Okay, so we have to become great friends, or at least eight hearts, with everybody. Ugh, man, I gotta socialize. So the new person we need to become friends with is Leo, and he loves duck feathers, mangoes, ostrich egg, and poi. You meet him pretty early on in your Ginger Island adventures. And his birthday is on the 26th of summer too, so I'd get busy to making this birdie boy your new best friend. We need two of his recipes too. Uh, we have to max out all of our levels, nothing new here, and you need to have found all star drops. There are no new ones added, so if you've already had a completionist farm, you should be pretty good here. Cooking recipes. Okay, so there are six new recipes that you need to craft, and I'll go over where to get each one. First, we have ginger ale. You can buy this on level five of the volcano dungeon. You'll need three ginger and one sugar to craft it. Banana pudding. The recipe can be bought from the island trader. It takes one banana, one milk, and two sugar to craft. The stats aren't too bad either. Mango sticky rice. This is a recipe learned from reaching seven hearts with Leo. You'll get it sent to you in the mail. You will need one mango, one coconut, and one rice. Poi takes four taro roots and it's a recipe sent to you in the mail after reaching three hearts with Leo. Tropical curry took me a little bit to find out where to get this. Gus can show up at the island resort. I found him there on a Friday and a Monday so far and he sells the recipe for the tropical curry. You'll need one coconut, one pineapple, and one hot pepper. And Squid Ink Ravioli. You'll learn this one by hitting level 9 of combat. It takes one squid ink, one wheat flour, and one tomato. We'll come back to the crafting stuff in a little bit. First, let's go over the fish that we have to catch. There are eight new fish that have been added, though we only need to catch three of those. And those are all found here on Ginger Island. First up, we have the blue discus. This fish is found in the rivers and ponds of the island. The lionfish can be found in all of the oceans. And lastly, the stingray. You first need to unlock the resort, which clears up the way to this side area in the east. Inside of this hidden cove, just get to fishing and you'll eventually catch the stingray. All right, crafting recipes. Now this is where it gets a bit uh, complicated. There are 25 new craftables that have been added into the game. I highly suggest going into your settings and turning on the advanced crafting information to help you keep track. Also to get all of these, you really want to get on filling out those special orders. You can get recipes sent to you after completing them and you can only complete one request a week. And not every single request is going to give you a recipe, so I'll show you the right ones. The request board changes every single Monday. These requests are pretty self-explanatory for what you need to do. There are a bunch of new drop-off spots around in the different areas as well, so keep an eye out for those. That's where you'll be dropping off your goods. Robin's Resource Rush. With this quest, Robin will send you the recipe for the stone chest. This takes 50 stone to craft. Caroline has a special order called Island Ingredients. With that, she'll give you the recipe for the solar panel. You'll need 10 refined quartz, 5 iron bars, and 5 gold bars to craft this. Community Cleanup is a special order done by Linus, and after that you will get the recipe for fiber seeds. You'll need one mixed seeds, five sap, and one clay to craft. The recipe for the farm computer is sent to you by Demetrius with either the quest Biome Balance or Aquatic Overpopulation. You'll need one dwarf gadget, one battery pack, and 10 refined quartz to craft. Gunther's request, Fragments of the Past, gives you the recipe for the bone mill. 
It takes 10 bone fragments, 3 clay, and 20 stone to craft. Man, I love you, buddy, but Clint, I don't understand you sometimes. He gives you the recipe for the geode crusher, literally his one job I ask him to do, if you finish the quest for cave patrol. It takes two gold bars, 50 stone, and one diamond to craft it. Willy special order request, Juicy Bugs Wanted, will give you the recipe for the quality bobber. You have to go to the beach to get this recipe. He won't send it to you in the mail. It takes one copper bar, 20 sap, and five solar essence. And the last two special orders are from the wizard. First up is a curious substance where he'll have you go and fighting some ghosts to get an ectoplasm. This is a quest item you can only get in this quest. You'll receive the recipe for the mini obelisk. It takes 30 hardwood, 20 solar essence, and 3 gold bars to make. And the last order from the wizard is prismatic jelly. You gotta go hunting in the local mines to find the prismatic slime. I just kept hitting level 5 over and over until it showed up for me. After you bring him the prismatic jelly that you get from this slime, he'll give you the recipe in the mail the next day for monster musk. You'll need 30 slime and 30 bat wings to craft this. Alright, that's it for the special order recipes. There are a couple more things that we need to craft though. Robin will now sell you two new floorings, the stone walkway floor and the rustic plank floor. There are four new recipes that if you're at max level, you already know now. You learn them from leveling up. The bug steak comes from level one of combat. Ew. And the cookout kit comes from foraging skill level nine. You need 15 wood, 10 fiber, and three coal for the cookout kit. The thorns ring comes from level seven of combat. It takes 50 bone, 50 stone, and one gold bar. And the glowstone ring. This comes from level four of mining. You'll need five solar essence and five iron bars. The island warp totem recipe is bought from the volcano dwarf for 10,000 gold. You'll need five hardwood, one dragon tooth, and one ginger to craft it. The island trader will give you the deluxe retaining soil recipe. You just gotta trade in 50 cinder shards. It takes five stone, three fiber, and one clay to make. The dark sign. I like the look of this one. It's a recipe sent to you from Krobus in the mail from friendship level three or four. So I was at four before I went to bed and when I woke up in the morning, I was at three. So somewhere in there. It only takes five bat wings and five bones. There are two new NPCs that will have quest lines that you need to complete in order to get recipes. For Professor Snail, you'll need to solve the survey and complete the donations in the field office. The survey is pretty simple. There are 22 purple flowers on the island and 18 starfish. You can find mummified bats from the rocks inside of the volcano dungeon. The mummified frog can be found from the jungle in the weeds. As for the fossils, some of these can be found in multiple ways, but I'll show you what worked for me. You gotta bring your copper pan over here for a fossilized tail. The spine can be found by fishing in that same river. You can also get the ribs from fishing or digging up any southern artifact dig spot fossilized legs as well as some of the other fossils can be found in these fossil nodes and skulls come from inside of the golden coconuts. The snake skull comes from fishing over in the west and south and the snake vertebrae and the snake skull come from dig spots in the west as well. Finish all of that and you'll get the recipe for the ostrich incubator. Birdie is the other NPC with her own recipe to give you. She has a quest called the Pirate's Wife. 
she'll give you a war memento that you'll have to keep trading items with other villagers to get to the last item. Give this memento to Kent, who gives you the gourmet tomato salt, which you give to Gus. Gus will give you the stardew flower. Give that over to Sandy. Sandy will give you the advanced TV remote, who you need to give to George. George will give you the Arctic Shard, you need to give that to Rasmodius. And then Rasmodius will give you a Wriggling Worm, which is of course for Willy. Willy is the last on our list who gives you this Pirate Locket, which you're going to give back to Birdie. After that, she'll give you the recipe for one of my favorite items, the Fairy Dust. And the last five recipes come from inside of the walnut room. Mr. Key will trade for these recipes. There is the deluxe fertilizer. It takes 20 key gems to learn and it takes one iridium bar and 40 sap to craft. The hyper speed grow takes 30 key gems and that will take one radioactive ore, three bone fragments and one solar essence to craft. Heavy Tapper takes 20 key gems to trade and you'll need 30 hardwood and one radioactive bar to craft. The Hopper takes 50 gems to trade and you'll need 10 hardwood, one iridium bar and one radioactive bar to craft this. And last we have the Magic Bait, a very interesting bait. It takes 20 key gems to trade, you'll need one radioactive ore and three bug meat to craft. And after that, that is the last thing we need to craft, which means we should be at 100% perfection if you've done everything correctly. So before you go any further into this video, I'm going to let you know everything after this. I consider a huge spoiler. It is the end of the game. Well, not really. I mean, Stardew Valley never actually ends, but it is the metaphorical end of the game. Let's go over all of the things that happen after you hit 100% perfection rating. First up, nothing actually happens until you wake up the next day, much like with many different upgrades in Stardew Valley. You'll notice a very interesting message down in the bottom corner, and when you leave your house, I notice that there are tropical birds everywhere. I probably wouldn't have noticed that if I was sleeping on my island farm. And now that pesky mysterious boulder up at the bathhouse area has been removed, bringing us up to a whole new area. Getting to the summit will unlock a special cutscene. It'll be a little different for everybody depending on who you're in a relationship with. Emily met me up here since we're married at the moment anyways. This cutscene is pretty long, so if you don't want to watch the whole thing, um, Click on this time frame right here and we'll move past it. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I've been playing Stardew Valley for so long. It has been so therapeutic for me and has such a special place in my heart. I, <laughs> I honestly cried during this. Uh. So what we have is a special cutscene for all of us Stardew Valley enthusiasts. It truly is a great way to appreciate everything that Concerned Ape has given to us and all the hard work that he's put into this game. And a good acknowledgement for the hard work we've put into playing this game.
Grandpa smiling down on me warms my heart so much. After this, I wasn't really able to find anything else to do with the summit. It's just a nice area to sit up at. I'm wondering if there's other things that might happen here on different days. But anyways, I know there are a couple more things that we can do with a 100% where I'm going to head back over to Mr. Key's walnut room and get my rewards. Mr. Key will now trade 100 key gems for a golden chicken egg. Oh, this is so exciting. And after you have reached your perfection rating and on to the next day, go and check the computer. You will get a very awesome statue. This perfection statue is pretty awesome. You plop this down and every morning you will get a new prismatic shard. Now with the golden chicken egg, you can absolutely incubate this and put it in your coop. After a few days, you will hatch a golden chicken and that golden chicken will continue to lay golden eggs for you too. You can sell the eggs or if you turn one into mayonnaise, it'll give you three mayonnaise per egg. There's also a new very rare nighttime event that'll happen after a 100%. I backed up my save and had to skip forward a couple of years to get this one to trigger, but what will happen is in the middle of the night you will hear the witch trigger but this time instead of the void egg witch you're going to get a magical golden witch which will grant you with a golden chicken egg in your coop and one more secret thing head on up to the summit of the volcano you'll notice that the lava monkeys hanging out are close by so you can interact with this one and you will get a, a special surprise oh man I, i'm gonna put this on one of my kids and the stardew valley journey is over actually no <laughs> there's still so much left for me to do but having perfection rating to strive for really pushes me in the game and i'm excited to try this again with another playthrough too well, friends, I really hope that some of this information, especially with how to get all the craftables and make them all and where to find everything helped you out at all. If you feel like this video will help a friend out, be sure to share it with them as well. Oh, and I want to know what is your favorite thing added that you can get with a 100% perfection rating? Let me know down in the comments below. I really appreciate all y'all for following along my Stardew Valley journey. I'm Wickedy, thank you so much for hanging out in the valley with me, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!